Every year, the EU member states produce about 380 million tonnes of construction and demolition waste, which is about 31% of the total waste amount produced in the whole European Union. At the same time, construction and demolition waste demonstrate an extensive potential of recovering valuable resources, which can be unlocked by reuse and recycling activities. Seeing this huge potential, the new Waste Directive sets up an ambitious societal goal to achieve a minimum of 70% increase of material recovery from non-hazardous construction and demolition waste by the year 2020. The IRCAL project, Innovative Strategies for High-Grade Material Recovery from Construction and Demolition Waste, is a collaborative research effort of 13 partners funded under the seventh framework program of research and technology development of the European Union. The main goal of the ERCO project is to develop and validate upgraded technological solutions to achieve an efficient material recovery from construction and demolition waste by a life cycle perspective. The technological challenges of the ERCO project deal with first creating innovative strategies promoting the reuse of building components, second creating novel recycling systems aiming to obtain high-grade recycled materials from construction and demolition waste. Third, developing high-grade construction products with the improved recycled materials. And finally, validating such solutions under real case studies. The benefits of the IRCO project are mainly access to innovative construction and demolition waste sorting and processing solutions validated under real conditions, and also new opportunities to contribute to the development of European policies aiming to foster efficient level of material recovery. The waste management hierarchy adopted in the new waste directive reveals that waste materials or products should be firstly reused before being recycled. Reuse is therefore almost always preferable to recycling in terms of overall environmental impact, providing that transportation is not excessive. It also seems to be a relatively easy alternative from the technical point of view, as it does not require advanced technological solutions. Despite these advantages, the reuse rates of construction components and materials are estimated to be less than 10%. Why is it so? There are a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that every, every reused product is one of a kind, so it's hard to assess the quality uh, of a large flow of reused products. For example, when you recycle, you can produce a batch and then test one of the produced products. But for the reuse, you have to test every product. Um, and that makes it very complex and, and, and hard to do in an efficient way. IRCAL studies carried out in six EU member states indicated that the current reuse markets are limited to components with cultural or aesthetic value and small-scale businesses aimed at private consumers and smaller companies. Large-scale activities for commercial construction projects are extremely rare. But what are the main reasons which make reuse rather unpopular? The major one is that most of, of the sector is skeptic to reuse and I think that's mostly because uh, there have been some bad examples of reuse. So what needs to be done is to spread the good examples where reuse have added value to the buildings uh, to sort of change this mindset that reuse should be the first option to, to consider. The studies also revealed that other critical barriers hampering the reuse of the recovered components are related to costs. The material is cheap compared to the cost of labor needed to recover it. In addition to this, the quality assurance of the recovered elements for reuse is a complicated issue, but an absolute requirement in many applications. To make a breakthrough in the situation, efficient strategies are needed that would encourage the reuse and demonstrate the added value of such approach. These strategies should change public perception towards the reuse on one hand, while on the other help develop a reuse market, including attractive opportunities for setting up new businesses. Good practices already exist in some countries, for example in Sweden, they should be further explored and promoted. IRCA will demonstrate how to combine all these aspects by developing a demo of a multifunctional dedicated internet service, which will show how to put the mitigation strategies into real market environment. The aim of the internet platform shall be not only to facilitate sell and purchase of elements and materials recovered from construction and demolition waste by both individual customers and wholesale agents, but to put it into a much broader context, including practical hints for users, exchange of best practices and even a wiki area to exchange relevant knowledge. 
However, higher use rates in construction and demolition waste in the future necessitate systemic solutions. These include use of eco-design principles in the construction sector, which require that each new product should be developed, taking into account the cradle-to-grave perspective. We have to look at how can we today design products that then later, after their use time is over, whether the building is being demolished or just this component is being taken out of a building, uh, that these end-of-life options are being integrated into design decisions. Here, the construction material designers and architects play an important role by incorporating the environmental considerations into the decision-making process. Of course, today we have to look at uh, what options we do have, uh, what is the situation today, which materials can we recover from processes in construction or from deconstruction, uh, which components as as whole components might be available to be reintegrated into products or into buildings. Um, we are facing a rather complicated uh, situation relating to requirements, to performance, uh, to guarantees also of the products and of the building in itself. In consequence, large volumes of mixed organic and inorganic construction and demolition waste arise in the EU due to lack of foresight in designing for easy disassembly, but also due to the use of more complex building solutions, such as insulations or composites. As not all the recovered elements and materials can be reused, recycling becomes an alternative. However, an efficient recovery of a high-quality material suitable for recycling may pose a technological challenge, as the mixed waste streams must be separated and extensively cleaned. Traditional recycling systems do not guarantee sufficient quality of the recovered materials enabling their use for derived recycled products in high-grade applications. For that purpose, more rigorous separation and cleaning techniques are needed to achieve the required levels of purity. Within the IRCAO project, this task is challenged by TITECH, a world-leading company in sorting techniques. It means you have fractions which are rather clean, stony fractions and you have mixed um, uh, construction and demolition waste. And this kind of mixed construction and demolition waste contains also other recyclable material, for example uh, plastic film uh, might contain uh, quite some amount of, of uh, wood, uh, plastics and so on, and also metal. The challenge lies in developing new multifunctional recycling solutions, which are based on the right combination of inexpensive traditional separation techniques with further advanced automated sorting techniques such as near-infrared and visual spectroscopy, electromagnetic sensors, X-ray sensors, color cameras, etc. Within the IRCAO project, automated sensor-based sorting technologies are tested at TTEX test facilities in Munchklein Karlich in Germany. What you see be behind us um, is a unit uh, which is based on near-infrared technology. Near-infrared technology um, is used or can be used to, to uh, distinguish and separate different materials by material type. Um, this can be combined also with electromagnetic um, sensors uh, for a metal separation or possibly also with uh, X-ray sensors, depending on what we can achieve with uh, which technology. Achieving a desired quality of the recycled materials creates a lot of space for innovations, especially that they can successfully replace raw materials, for example recovered aggregate materials of high purity. However, in order to explore this potential, it is essential to know what consequences of these innovative solutions are for the environment. Belgian research institute VITO will investigate the environmental impacts associated with the uses of recycled materials in different applications. The results will help in developing and testing a number of innovative building elements, such as cement-based products, where 100% by weight of the stony fraction can be replaced by mixed recycled aggregates, thermal and acoustic insulations, wood polymer composites using high percentages of recycled wood fiber, and plastic and multi-layer components for building envelopes. An important role in this task belongs to companies who share their interest and actively participate in the development and testing of the innovative products seeing business opportunities. One of them is Jacobs Beton from Belgium, which specializes in production of concrete and concrete elements with the use of recycled aggregates. What we're going to do is, is we're going to try to uh, recycling concrete, just demolition concrete, recycling it. We put it about 720, it's a, a special type of granulate and we're going to reuse it in the top concrete possible. It's, it's a sort of uh, top road concrete. And that's something we're going to test in this IRCO project. That's one of the tests. The other test we're going to do is we're going to make uh, blocks like you see uh, after you. 
and we're gonna make a mixed uh, mixed demolition. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like bricks and concrete together, mixed uh, uh, granulate, and we're gonna make the bricks with it. Construction and demolition waste also usually contains such materials as plastics, mineral wool, or gypsum plasterboard, though the fraction of these waste types is usually below 10% by weight at a construction or demolition site. Thousands of tons are accumulated year by year in Europe, and even more by volume. They end up at landfills in large amounts because recyclers don't know what to do with them. Within the IRCAO project, a Finnish SME Kononor will demonstrate how this waste can be processed into extruded composites containing about two-thirds of waste and one-third of recycled polymer. These valuable green construction materials can be processed by extrusion like plastics while being wood-like. Can such materials find a new life in the construction sector? Yes, indeed, they can. Uh, uh, wood plastic composites would be the product uh, where these materials could enter to. Uh, it is a uh, relatively unknown uh, material, but it's been already in the market for some 20 years. Um, typical applications would be replacing treated wood. Like where we are standing now, these uh, terrace and patios are very typical applications for wood plastic composites. Next would be coming uh, fencing application, uh, making piers and uh, pathways. Uh, and when going into indoor applications, flooring, uh, ceilings and uh, wall panels. An effective valorization of construction and demolition waste requires that the reuse and recycling activities must prove not only technically feasible, but also economically viable. The suspect is being investigated by Da Polonia, a private engineering company who attempts to develop such a business model which will embrace the whole cycle of construction project involving all relevant actors. We need, first of all, that these new applications are competitive on performance and also on cost at the same time. Um, the fact that there may be greener solutions is not uh, sufficient in order to establish new markets. They must be competitive on performance. Uh, and, of course, they also need to comply to legislation and standards. The business model uh, will be uh, built around the different technologies that are being developed uh, into the, the project. We need to cover the full uh, supply chain from the supply side, from the technological side and from the demand side. Building upon the business model, a new integrated service will be deployed by Asiona, Europe's leading construction company, through its own business line. The uniqueness of the IRCAO project stems from the fact that all developed materials, approaches and models will be tested in real conditions in five case studies carried out in the countries participating in the project. These case studies include a selective demolition of an industrial building in the Basque Country to validate optimal supply chains for reuse of the recovered building components and demonstrate the on-site recycling routes. A selective demolition of a building in Sweden to demonstrate the inventory of elements to be reused and recycled and also validate the optimal supply chains. A selective dismantling and an on-site treatment of fibrous materials such as asbestos in Poland. A demolition followed by a construction of a building with the use of construction and demolition waste recycled materials in Torrell, Aragon. And finally, a case study in the port of Antwerp to validate on-site processing routes for stony fraction and testing of new cement-based applications using recycled cellular concrete and recycled expanded polymers. It is anticipated that a successful implementation of IRCAO outputs might result in an increase of the construction and demolition waste recycling rate by over 23% by the year 2020, contributing to the achievement of the waste directive objectives. Likewise, the use of construction and demolition waste recycled materials in high-grade applications is expected to move from the current 6% to 19.4% by the year 2020. It is our ambition to make a change in the current scenario of construction and demolition waste management towards a more sustainable building industry, coupled with a more efficient use of resources. You can help us by joining our stakeholder panel. To learn more about our activities, visit our website at www.ircow.eu.